Harry Potter Magic Awaken throws a lot of information out at once, and I do not want you guys to make the same mistakes I did. So here are 10 tips and tricks about Harry Potter Magic Awaken that I wish I knew sooner. From strategic card upgrades to smart usage of your keys, these game-changing insights will save you time and prevent crucial mistakes. Number one, do not upgrade all your cards at once. It can be really tempting to immediately upgrade every card you have in your deck. To upgrade cards, you need multiple copies of the same card plus gold. At the beginning of the game, you have plenty of gold. The UI even encourages you to upgrade cards because this is essentially how you level up in the game. Upgrading your cards will level up your spell book, which is going to boost your overall stats. Of course, this is important to do, but here's the thing. You'll hit a point in the game where gold becomes much more difficult to obtain. As the cards become more and more expensive and the gold becomes harder to even get, it's crucial to upgrade only the cards that you truly need or anticipate using in the future. Focus on cards that could be used in multiple decks and invest your resources wisely. Now, admittedly, if you're just starting out, it's hard to know what cards you're going to use. You don't really know which cards are good and what kind of deck you'll want to play, so take your time, make your way through the story missions, and only start to upgrade the cards once you begin finding the ones that you really like and the ones that you use frequently. A big part of this is also going to be about if you're more of a PvP player or a PvE player, or if you want to do both, because there are certain cards that work well in both decks, certain cards that only work well in PvP, and certain cards that only work well in PvE. Now, speaking of cards, that takes us to number two, don't be afraid to spend your keys. There are a lot of different currencies and rewards in Harry Potter Magic Awaken. For the most part, you'll want to be very cautious with how you spend them, like in our first example with the gold. Silver keys and gold keys, on the other hand, are one way you get new cards to use in your decks. You can earn keys in many different ways, just by completing challenges, doing your daily tasks, and completing chapters. To use your silver and gold keys, you'll need to go into the shop and navigate to the Magical Studies tab. On the left, we have Basic Study, which is where you can spend silver keys. One silver key gives you two random cards of the epic rarity or lower. Now, one of the really cool features here is that even though your chances of pulling an epic card are pretty low, there is a built-in protection system that guarantees you'll get at least one epic card in every 30 draws. You can see the little counter here that keeps track of how many keys you've used, and it works the same way for the advanced study on the right, which is where you can spend the gold keys. Now, with the gold keys, you have a chance for mythic, dark, or legendary cards. Here, you'll be guaranteed at least one of those in every 20 draws. Now, this guaranteed progress number will reset each time you get one of those cards. So once you get an epic card from the silver keys, it will reset back down to zero and start counting up again when you spend more keys. Same thing for the gold keys. You can also spend your keys one at a time or stack them to spend multiple keys at once. And that takes us to number three, do not upgrade lower tier echoes. Building card decks are how you do battle in Magic Awaken, but they're only one piece of the puzzle here. You'll reach a point where you unlock echoes and to simplify what these do, they're basically special abilities you can use when battling. And you can really Really set up your entire deck to play off the ability of your Echo. In fact, that's what you want to do to be a top tier player. The Echoes come in the form of iconic witches and wizards from the series, such as Harry, Snape, Bellatrix, Hermione, and plenty of others. Each of them has a special ability, but what isn't immediately clear is that each Echo comes in one of four tiers. Common, which is gray, rare, which is blue, epic, which is purple, legendary, which is gold. Now, why this is a bit confusing is that each card in the game also comes in one of these four tiers. However, the tier is set for each card. So Stupefy, for example, is always a common card. Expelliarmus is always an epic card, and so on. Now, there are also mythic cards, but as far as I know right now, Ron Weasley is the only mythic card in the game. So here's why Echoes are a bit different, is because they can come in any of the four tiers. So Snape, for example, you can get him as a common, rare, epic, or legendary. And so for this reason, it doesn't make a lot of sense to upgrade Echoes that are lower than at least the epic tier. You definitely want to avoid upgrading rare or common Echoes, as they're not worth the investment. So just be patient and eventually you'll start getting those legendary and epic echoes. Unfortunately though, this is exactly the mistake that I made. I unlocked the Snape echo and was like, hey, this is a really fun echo. I like how it plays and I upgraded it all the way to the max. Well, guess what? It was just a common echo, which limits the maximum power of that echo. If I just waited a bit longer, I could have used it on the rare Snape echo that I got shortly after. Or what I plan to do now is wait for epic or legendary echoes. Now, one additional layer to the echoes is that even though their special ability is always the same, there's also a second secondary effect, and that's the boosting of certain cards. This special boosting is random and can change even between echoes of the same type. When you go to upgrade an echo, you won't be able to see all of the boosted cards right away. Honestly though, if you don't love the first cards that you see and they don't match some of your favorite cards in your decks, then it's probably not an echo that you want to waste your time on. You also want to make sure that the boosted cards play well with the echo's special ability overall. This is not something I did at all when I upgraded that Snape echo. So the ultimate goal here is to gradually upgrade that echo. Let's say you 
see a few cards that you really like and that you play a lot, go ahead and upgrade it, but don't upgrade it all the way. What you're really shooting for is you wanna have as many of these cards in this Echo as possible, be cards that you are actually going to play and use in that deck because then they're all gonna be getting a boost from this Echo. When it comes to unlocking the Echoes, you'll need to know all about the Forbidden Forest, and that's where number four comes in. Do not underestimate the Forbidden Forest. The forest is a treasure trove of rewards for both single player and multiplayer, and you can even do that multiplayer component with NPCs if you'd prefer not teaming up with real world players. When it comes to the solo forest runs, this is how you start unlocking new Echoes that you haven't seen before. If you could reach level 16, that's when you'll unlock the Bellatrix Echo, which is widely recognized as one of the best Echoes in the game. Level five is another really important level on the Solo Forest because that's when you'll unlock the Ford Anglia, which is a game changer when you get this. Essentially, it allows you to earn rewards for free, even while you're away from the game. So just think about this, while you're away, the car will be going through the forest, gathering Echoes and other items. How much it's able to gather for you is based on the maximum level you've completed in the Solo Forest. So the further you can progress, the better rewards you'll get from the car. Now, as for the multiplayer, this one is referred to as the Haunted Hollow. No, not Hallows. Here you can get one key per day and it has a chance to be a silver or gold key. Even though you can get one per day, you don't necessarily need to do it every single day. It will actually stack up to seven days, so if you miss a few days, you'll be fine, as long as you can play at some point each week and make progress on unlocking those keys by completing the run. And as I mentioned before, if you don't have anyone online to play with, you can just tap the plus icon here and add two classmate NPCs to join you for the run. Once you upgrade your spellbook to level 20, you'll unlock the Deathly Dell run, which is a much longer run through the forest. This one also has a chance to drop keys and you get two tries per week on this one. Both of those reset every Monday. Now, one more thing about the forest. Even after you've completed all of your runs for the week, it is definitely still beneficial to go on future runs helping out friends. When you do so, you'll get thank you notes of which you can farm up to 10 of these per day with a maximum of 50 per week. If you wanna make this really simple, you can even set it to level one and just farm away. You can then redeem these at the thank you notes gift exchange to buy monthly rewards or weekly rewards. This includes trade tokens, which are really valuable because these are going to allow you to trade cards with other players, even legendary ones, if you have enough to buy a legendary trade token, that is. Now, speaking of rewards, number five, don't miss your free rewards. Of course, Harry Potter Magic Awakened is a free-to-play game, so there are going to be microtransactions to spend real-world money if you choose. But you should know there are many ways to get free rewards by simply playing the game and keeping an eye out for your in-game mailbox. Make sure to do all of your daily missions and quests. There's even a free item that shows up every day in the shop, so make sure to claim that every day you log in. There's a magic pass system as well, and even if you don't spend real money on the higher tier, the top row is free to all players. Just make sure you go in and claim the rewards as you unlock them. Now, with this being launch week for us here in the US, there was also a questionnaire that I was able to complete that showed up in my little in-game inbox and also gave me rewards for completing it. And then if you haven't yet, this is also where you will claim all of your pre-order bonuses, which are made available after creating your character in Diagon Alley. Also, don't forget about exploring. Admittedly, the focus of Magic Awaken is not on exploring. This is not a game like Hogwarts Legacy where you're gonna try to explore every inch of the world. And the game does have a really nice fast travel system. It's gonna allow you to quickly warp to just about any activity you choose by using the map and the menu here on the left. That being said, by actually walking through the castle and even parts of Diagon Alley on your own, you'll come across items that you can tap to unlock for free. So always be on the lookout for these when you're taking a class, visiting Diagon Alley, or even just roaming the stairs of Hogwarts. For number six, don't miss out on the in-game help options. We said in the beginning, there's a lot of currencies in this game, there's a lot of systems to get used to, but the more I've played, I've really started to appreciate just how many little tool tips Niantic has included here. Now the hard thing is because there's so much, when you first start the game, you really won't know what all you can click on. But try to click on every icon, look at the little eye icon, and a lot of times you're gonna be able to expand this and get a menu telling you a lot of valuable information. Now this is even more important if you start to drop some real world money on this game, and even if you're not spending real world money, just when you're using the keys, it will tell you exactly your odds of getting different types of cards. Now that I know about this, I've just been clicking and tapping on everything, trying to read as much information as I possibly can. Now there's also a feature where you can view recommended card decks. So there are a lot of features within the game itself to help new players learn some of the deeper strategies that if you really want to keep playing the game long term, you'll need to know. Number seven, don't choose the wrong server. The game just launched globally and because it's an MMO, there are multiple servers throughout the world. They actually just made the announcement that even the soft launch servers are now available to all players. 
players. So why is the server so important? Well, if you want to play with friends, you'll need to make sure you're on servers from the same region. Note, according to the new post from Magic Awaken, you don't necessarily have to be on the exact same server, just the same region. Are servers within the same region linked? And can players add friends and play content with other players in different servers within the same region? And their answer, yes. Most servers within the same region are linked. Players within the same regional servers can add each other as friends, be roommates, team up for the Forbidden Forest, and dance club together. Note, soft launch servers are not linked to other servers within their region yet. And that's as of June 30th, 2023. So if you do realize you're on the wrong server, you can switch this after the fact. Unfortunately, you'll need to make a brand new character to do so, thus restarting your progress. Your server is displayed in the bottom left corner of the game's main menu. If you'd like to switch to a different server, simply tap on the name, then choose a new server from the region you prefer. Number eight, don't forget your daily duels. Duels offer valuable rewards, including silver or gold keys, gold, and gems. Make sure to participate in duels daily and take advantage of the opportunity to earn these rewards. Now, if you haven't done a lot of dueling yet, you're probably still in the novice tier. As long as you're in the novice tier, you don't have to worry about getting matched up against any real world players. So you can play and learn as much as you want about the duels while you're in the novice rank. Once you hit bronze though, you'll start getting matched up with other players who are close to the same skill level as you. Number nine, don't underestimate joining a social club. Joining a social club has been one of my favorite aspects of the game so far. Not only do social clubs provide a sense of community, but they also enable you to trade cards with fellow members. This can really come in clutch if there are specific cards you need, especially when it comes to upgrading cards. Remember, in this game, you actually want duplicate cards because you need multiple copies before you can upgrade. Grade. By being in a social club, there's also special activities you can participate in as a group and also unlock special rewards. There's a club adventure activity you can do twice each day, and by working together as a team, you'll unlock rewards for the whole group. There are leaderboards as well, so you can compete against other clubs from around the world to see how you stack up. We actually still have a few spots left in our House Reconteur Club, so if you're looking for an active club with a lot of eager Magic Awakened players, just search for House Reconteur once you've unlocked social clubs by playing through the main missions. First come, first served. And number 10, don't don't waste your gems. Gems are very, very valuable. Be careful on where you spend them. Do not spend them on keys. First of all, that is an incredibly poor value for the gems. Even though keys let you open packs of cards, it is just not a good value to spend your gems here. If you're really focusing on being a free to play only player, then I would recommend only buying cards that you really play a lot. And if you just started playing the game, you probably don't even know which cards you're going to play a lot yet. So it certainly makes sense to save those gems. We have so much Magic Awakened content already here on the channel and plenty more on the way. So if you're new here and want to see more content like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button before you go. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.